with your KLEK 102.5 forecast. You'll be mostly sunny and hot today, right around 90, and it looks like the winds north-northeast 5 to 10. Light winds overnight, mid-60s, mostly clear skies expected. Friday should be a sunny, hot day in the low 90s with light winds. There might be a shower or thunderstorm over the weekend. It's a low chance, 20-30% coverage. Most of Saturday and Sunday should be partly to mostly sunny in the low 90s. Your life, your music, we're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Catherine Drew. The United Nations has called for calm and restraint after troops in Zimbabwe fired on protesters, killing three people. It comes as the opposition MDC Alliance has accused the ruling ZANU-PF party of rigging recent elections. Human rights groups have criticised internet giant Google following reports it's developing a search engine that will enforce China's censorship laws. And New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern returns to the office after maternity leave saying she is ready to get back to work it's 901 community conversations is brought to you by arkansas early learning offering no cost child care in jonesboro in northeast arkansas applications at arearlylearning.org arkansas early learning is a nonprofit organization klek lp jonesboro the voice of arkansas minority advocacy council it's now time for community conversations a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Thursday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to your day. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kobila Jones, and my special guest today is Mr. Lewis Davis. I'm from the 2nd Judicial District. Um, he is the juvenile district super juvenile <laughs> district supervisor. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I invited him here to talk about the juvenile justice system. I'm you know, school is about to be back in session and our children will be facing lots of issues and we just want them to have the healthiest, happiest year and hopefully stay out of trouble. So hopefully Mr. Lewis can help give us some insight to how to deal with our youth of today and how we can hopefully keep them out of the justice system. But in worst case scenario, they do get uh, caught up. What parents and caregivers can expect going through the process. But before we get into that, I would like for Mr. Lewis to please give us some introduction of himself, whatever you would like to share with the listeners and viewers. Well, I'm a lifelong uh, resident of Jonesboro. I uh, graduated Jonesboro High School in 1987. Uh, went on to play football at Arkansas State, got my <laughs> bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies uh, with an emphasis in psychology, sociology, and social oh, work. Wow. Uh, been married for 23 years. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, 22 years. Oh, be 23 in February. Right. <laughs> she, listen, she'll never remember the dates. <laughs> but it'll be 23 years in February. Uh, have four children, 10 grandchildren. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. <laughs> so I've been with the juvenile department for 13 years now. 13 years. And I've been working with uh, juveniles and adolescents for the last 16 years. Amazing. So I'm sure that you have made some major impacts um, in the lives of all of the children that you have come across. Well, the goal is to try. Okay. Uh, you know, those those little success stories that I get are those those kids and parents that come back to me and okay. tell me that, you know, that I've done something positive and those are the things that keep me going. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and get right into our discussion. I want to first start out. I know this may seem like an elementary question, but can you please define what a juvenile is? <laughs> A juvenile is classified um, by law as anybody between the age of zero to um, 17 years old. Okay. Okay. Once you're 18, you're not classified as a juvenile anymore. Okay. Now, when you're dealing with terms of the court, a juvenile delinquent uh, or somebody who can be, um, you can press charges against for criminal act. That is somebody between the ages of 10 to 17. Okay. 10, 10? 10 years old. You can go to jail at 10 years old. Yes, ma'am. Now, in your course of your career, have you actually had to deal with someone at 10 or 11? We have. Uh, we, it, we we make it a point not to put somebody that young in jail. Okay. Um, 
you know, I, I think it's detrimental to their mental health or, or those kind of things if, you know, they're that young to put them in that kind of situation. Okay. Now, we've had to detain them. Okay. Or, you know, sometimes you'd have to put handcuffs on them to get them to actually calm down or that kind of thing. But, you know, to take them to jail, we don't we don't try to practice that. Okay. Now, I um, want to get into, explain more what a juvenile delinquent is. Like, um, you know, we hear the term kind of thrown around, but there is actual legal terminology that defines. Yes. Uh, a juvenile delinquent is basically the classification of a term that comes about once a child has been to court for a criminal action. Okay. Uh, the judge would find them to be a juvenile delinquent, okay. whether it's they plead guilty or if they're found guilty at the end of a, of a trial. Okay. Now, what types of situations would lead a child, a juvenile, um, to be arrested and then go to court? And then are there, on the flip side, are there cases where you have had to, you've been able to let the child go in a warning citation or something like that? Um, what a lot of people don't realize is juvenile court is circuit court. Okay. And that is the same thing as adults would go to court for for any uh, felony offenses or, or things of that nature. Okay, we hear everything from misdemeanor theft or shoplifting all the way up to murder in our courts. So a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, <laughs> would you? Oh, well, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that wow. I know that's, that's kind of shocking, but we do, you know, and it's rare that we get anything to that, uh, I guess, extent. Okay. But, you know, that's what our court can and, and, and does handle. Uh, since my time being, we the, I think one of the worst cases we've had as far as involving the death was a manslaughter. So a manslaughter, is that in, that's intentional? Well, I'm sorry. Can you explain what manslaughter is? I don't want to say the wrong thing. There are different degrees, and, and, and I would have to have my statute okay. book to actually, you know, be specific, and I don't want to be misleading. Okay. But it's, uh, some of it's not intentional. Okay. You know, but you're the cause of that death is what it is, basically. All right. All right. So, parents, caregivers, we need to start learning these different uh, terms so that we can inform our children more um, so hopefully they won't run into these situations right and you, you had a second part of your question uh, I think oh, yes. it was uh, there were times where you can they may have gotten in trouble but you can let them go without going through the whole system yes um, we we take care in in trying to keep kids from coming to court as much as possible okay. especially at a younger age and, and even uh, 16 17 year old kids who've never been in the system uh, if they have you know misdemeanor offenses uh, as they say I messed up you know okay. and, and we're all uh, human none of us are Jesus Christ so we're not perfect so we, we're, we're allowed to make mistakes and, and get a little forgiveness every now and then but uh, yeah we have a diversion program and basically that's a program where you can do an informal uh, supervision where they don't have to come to court that kind of thing a lot of times we give warnings okay. uh, it, it just depends on the circumstance the kid uh, you know what we get when we interview them and the parents and, and what, what kind of feel we get for them. Okay. Um, is there a website or any place that people can go to actually look up the various laws so that they can be more informed on how children are um, juveniles, like their children, I wouldn't. Though. I would not suggest a lay person, okay. somebody who's not uh, efficient or proficient with Okay. Uh, legal terminology to actually read and try to interpret the law. Okay. So talk to someone who works yes. with the law. Yes. Okay. And, 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 and in retrospect, I'm not an attorney, so I can't give legal advice. And I have people come to me all the time, well, okay. what should I do about this or that? So I, I can't give legal advice. All right. So I guess the advice today is seek an attorney, <laughs> someone who studied and knows the law. Um, that can give you the advice that you are seeking. Yes. Okay. So let's move into... Once a juvenile has committed a crime and now they're in custody, what happens? Um, what happens? <laughs> well, when you say custody, I mean they custody have been of arrested. The, okay, they've been uh, arrested. They've been arrested. Uh, with with juveniles, once uh, they're with the law enforcement official, whether it's you know a sheriff's department deputy or a local police officer or something of that nature, even ASU police department. Um, the majority of the time, they have to contact somebody from my office to authorize a detention. Okay. 
uh, which means for them to go to jail. Uh, and depending on the circumstance, the case, even the information we get from the officer, that will determine if we uh, have them go to detention or not. Okay. You know, um, just say in situations, a juvenile suspected of committing a crime, you didn't catch them in the act, but you, through investigation, you got word that this person, that this is a person of interest. So, are you allowed to arrest them with or without a warrant? Explain that process. When there are cases that come to us, usually cases that happen like that, they're handled by the um, investigative departments at the sheriff's department or at the at the uh, local level. Okay. Now, and that's even the local level of all the county, I mean, all the cities in the county. Okay. So, those officers would usually handle those investigative practices. That's not something that we can do because what, what's told to us is, is at times can't be used in court or or when we come to making those decisions as to, you know, what to charge you with. Okay. All right. Um, now, I'm sure that you've seen quite a few individuals come through court. Um, can you tell us some situations? Okay. How can I word this? <laughs> uh, juveniles come before the judge and... Of course, you're going to have some that just proclaim, I'm not guilty, I didn't do it. Or they see no wrong in their actions. Um, and then there's those that are remorseful. Um, kind of give us an insight on how the judge deals with the different types of juveniles that come before him. You know, each, each case is different. Okay. And I don't want to, to speak for the judges, but I'm going to tell you what I what see and what I see and I observe and what okay. I think is happening. Uh, I, I think... You know, with those cases that come forth and, and juveniles are are remorseful or, or, you know, they're sorry for the things they've done and they have good support and those type of things, I think the judge tries to be more lenient as far as punishment and, and also sometimes services that are offered to those families. Okay. Uh, if we have, you know, little Johnny and his mama sitting up there and they act like they'd rather be somewhere else, <laughs> then, you know, it's not a good look and it's not something that's going to make them to appear in a better light of the okay. judge. I mean, if you're not taking it seriously, then they're going to probably, you know, raise their level up a little bit more to, to get, grab your attention. Now, are there cases where, like just say in that case where the parent or caregiver is not showing any real interest um, they're being disrespectful, whatever the case may be. Will the judge, in I know it's a juvenile judge, but will he in turn, he or she, in turn make a recommendation that the parent seek, um, attend some type of classes or, I don't know, face some type of something? like. Well, <laughs> your, your term juvenile judge is correct in a sense, but okay. they're also circuit judge. Circuit and judge, they preside over the circuit courts as okay. well. So by, not only do they handle juvenile cases, but they handle uh, circuit court cases as well. So they deal with adults all the time. Okay, so will the judge then decide, okay, you know, you all are not taking this serious, so I'm going to order the parent to... We've ordered the pa we've ordered parents to parenting classes. We've ordered parents to rehab. The judge has put parents in, in jail for contempt of court for their actions or lack of thereof. So, yeah, I mean, the so, judge can, can do... The, the power of the bench is... is is, is mighty. <laughs> wow, okay. So, um, you know, we see a lot of incidents, Not thankfully not in Jonesboro, well, not to my knowledge. Unfortunately, there was an incident that broke out where a group of kids got to fighting in a parking lot. How do you handle something like that? I mean... Those are difficult. Okay. Um, because generally, you don't get a full picture. You don't know. It's, it's hard to establish who all is fighting. Um, you know, is it mutual combat, which is what we mean, two kids get together and agree to fight. Okay. Uh, you know, if those kind of things happen, well, kids have been fighting since before I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I fought as a kid. You know, those things kind of happen. Um, if it's a public nuisance and, you know, endangers people around it, then, you know, yeah, we may have to step in and... and and try to pinpoint who's involved and, and take steps to, to bring them in, you know, in front of the court or to our office and see what kind of actions we can do. Okay. 
All right, so um, I want to get into, again, we, school is going to be back in session. And so kids, they take whatever they've done over the summer sometimes, and it filters into the school. Um, how do you handle a child at school? Um, are you allowed to arrest them on site if their act is deemed criminal or deemed I guess offensive enough to cause. Well, I mean, you're you're right. It's, it has to be a criminal act to be okay. arrested. Okay. So yes, kids can be arrested at school. It, it happens all the time. Um, you know, it's not a daily thing that happens around here, but it does happen. Now, do you have to contact a parent or caregiver before you can take them off the pro off the premises? No, you do not. Okay. But the parents have to be contacted that their child has been arrested. Okay. That is that's that's part of the law. Okay. Um, we've seen quite a few, and unfortunately, we've seen quite a few school shootings. Um, how do you handle children with weapons? I mean, I'm guessing the same. You know, after, um, I can't remember the name of the shooting last year. Uh, there was, Parkland was the most Parkland. recent. Okay. After Parkland last year, that's the one that was, that was coming to mind. Okay. We had a rise in... Uh, the threat to school shootings and and we probably had five or six just kind of just one after another immediately thereafter and I don't know if it's kids being copycats or you know seeking attention or that kind of thing but you know those things are we take extremely seriously and we're going to act as swift as possible when those things happen wow all right we have a Facebook comment um We'll say good morning to Miss Chelsea Chapman and Kobe Parker. And Kobe says, good morning, guys. Mr. Lewis is my guy. What's up, Kobe? <laughs> Thank you for checking in. All right, so um, I'm looking at, uh, even though this is kind of outdated, um, just using it as kind of a guide. It's a juvenile. It's a law. 2015 Law Enforcement Pocket Manual. But please help me out on the updated um, laws. Um, when it comes to... Cyber bullying, cyber and cyber bullying, bullying in general. How do officer? How do you all handle those situations? I'm gonna be just frank here. Okay. I, I hate. To me, those things are a nuisance. Okay. Uh, I know it happens. It's true, but those things can be controlled by the parent. Uh, I get people in my office all the time. You know. Little Sally's getting bullied on, on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat by this person. Well, you know, it, it's real easy to go unfriend them. Okay. Uh, you know, close the account. You know, most, no, not most, all social media accounts, you know, you're supposed to be 18 before you have them. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, these uh, <laughs> children find a way to get around some of those. No, a absolutely. And not, not all kids, uh, you know, need or entitled to a cell phone because they can't handle it. No. No. I tell parents all the time, you know, today's today's technology and today's cell phones is more computing power than what lost the first, you know, space mission to uh, mission to the moon. Oh wow. <laughs> and they can probably not probably they can work them work the devices better than most adults. Yes. They can so yes. um so would you say parents should just really be more proactive? Um, in their parenting when it comes to, and not just with cyberbullying and bullying, but with anything in their child's life. They need to be, need to be more proactive. With, with, without a doubt. I actually uh, happened to be out at Arkansas State yesterday and spoke to the athletic director, Terry Mahaj. Okay. And he's got, you know, teenage girls, 15-year-old girl, and he was telling me some things about, you know, what she, she had going on. But he has this app, and I need to figure out what it is because I, I would like <laughs> to put that out there that allows him to actually shut down all of her apps on her phone whenever he knew whenever he chooses to wow you know and it limits the access she has to her phone at all times unless he says that she can use it that is amazing we do as parents and i can even though my child is a little older now i, I probably don't have that same power with him but um we as parents and caregivers of children under the age of 18 need to really be more vigilant and aware of what they're doing, especially their online presence, um, because that seems to be where it's going now. Everything's online. They're doing everything virtually. <laughs> um, no one's having real face-to-face -face conversations anymore. Oh, without a doubt. And, <laughs> you know, for whatever reason, I don't understand the concept of, 
you know, I'm behind this keyboard, or I'm behind my phone, and, and I'm misrepresenting myself to who I truly am, mm-hmm. you know, instead of, you know, me being, you know, 13 or 14 years old and, and you know, 5 foot 3 and 110 pounds, I'm 6 foot 7 and I'm 285 pounds and I'm, I'm solid muscle, <laughs> you know, so I'm the baddest man on the planet behind this keyboard. Okay. Um, or female. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the case may be. Um, as we get ready to get closer to break, I want to ask this question. Do you feel that, from your experience working in law enforcement, in, in particular with juveniles, do you feel that today's society has altered or warped their sense of reality? Of what, um, when it comes to legal, in terms of legal issues or crime, um, has kind of warped how they think and feel and what they think they can do and get away with. I think a lot of people are opinions and, and views are skewed by TV shows and what they see on TV. Okay. Uh, especially with the justice system. They think maybe, uh, it's like if you have a trial and most people who, who you know, if you vote, you, you, you may be called to a jury pool and have to sit on a jury for a trial and, and they're wanting the CSI effect that, you know, uh, this, this information should be instantaneous or um, you know, I, it, yeah, it's skewed okay. <laughs> to answer your question. Okay. All right, so we're going to get ready to take a break. I don't want to get too deep into another question at the moment. I want to thank everyone that is checking in. Please share this video. Uh, please drop us your questions if you have any. Those of you who have children and grandchildren or what nieces, nephews, I would love for you to be a part of the conversation. Good morning, Ms. Nora Hunt, um, for joining. Thank you for joining us. Uh, but we're going to take a quick break. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these announcements. Listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Looking for a fun way to spend an afternoon with your kids? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. With all the games, movies, and books out there, our kids still somehow find a way to whine. I'm bored. One great way to cure their boredom is to take them on a treasure hunt. Setting up a scavenger hunt around your home is easy. Just create clues and then hide them around the house in different places, under the table, in the food pantry, or on their bathroom mirror. The hunt should end with some sort of treasure. Surprise them with a small present or a scroll that says they're going to the park or out to their favorite restaurant. Remember, your family first. Want to connect with Mark on Facebook? You can at facebook.com slash Mark Merrill. The Family Minute with Mark Merrill. Helping families love well. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A 1908. Dot com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. The Black Professionals Network of Jonesboro was incorporated January 2013 with the mission of creating networking opportunities and to create community presence in the Jonesboro area. BPN is a diverse group of professionals established to make Jonesboro Jonesboro, an ideal place for people of color, and operates under the four pillars of live, learn, lead, and link. BPN meets the third Thursday of every month. More info, Black Professionals Network on Facebook and bpnjonesboro.org. The Epic Center, located at 1899 Hasbrook Road, County Road 333, is Jonesboro's newest venue for entertainment for the entire family. They offer an auditorium with theater-style seating for up to 1,100 guests. 
a large stage, professional lighting and sound, dressing rooms, concessions, and more. Available for weddings, concerts, pageants, birthday parties, showers, and more. Booking and other information is available at Epic Center Jonesboro on Facebook, epiccenterjonesboro.com, and at 870-530-5841. House of Details, located at 3217 Herb Street, Suite C, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, waxing, clear coat protection, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more. With a motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details available via Quentin Bogard at 870-273-5187. House of Details on Facebook and House of Details Jonesboro.com. Check out the Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Listen as Dorinda plays the very best in contemporary gospel music and interviews all of your favorite gospel artists. The Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show, every Sunday at 4 p.m. on KLEK 102.5 FM. KLEK would like to extend a sincere thank you to all of our underwriters and sponsors. If you would like to sponsor or underwrite our program and help us to educate, entertain, and empower the community, our number is 870-203-9951. Our email address is klek1025fm at gmail.com. The website address is K-L-E-K-F-M dot O-R-G. Again, thank you for listening. Support for KLEK is brought to you by Fullness of Joy Ministries, 2120 Thorn Street, Jonesboro, under the direction of Bishop Adrian Rogers and co-pastor Susan Rogers, www.fojministries.org. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Khalila Jones, and I'm speaking with Mr. Lewis Davis Jr., who is the juvenile juvenile district supervisor for the second mouthful. <laughs> second judicial district. Um, okay, so we're gonna continue our conversation talking about the juvenile justice system. And I know I'm sorry I'm asking kind of outlandish questions or I'm trying to ask questions that maybe someone who doesn't understand or who doesn't know. And even though I took a few courses, I still don't know everything that I need to know. So Well you'll be surprised. Most people don't know about the juvenile system. I mean it's it's you know, officers call me all the time about, you know, problems or what they think, you know, what I think about a the situation they've got going on or what they should do. So, and even though we give them a brief, you know, two, three, four hour overview when, when they're going through their training, okay. you know, there's going to be situations they're going to run into that just not going to know which way to go. Okay. I've been woke up at, you know, two o'clock in the morning by the sheriff, you know, oh, wow. dealing with uh, murder involving a 17 year old. So, I mean, those things just happen. Oh, wow. Okay. Alrighty, so that kind of leads into another question. Um, my next question, I don't know which one to ask first. I guess, okay, can a juvenile be charged with a felony? We've talked about this before, and yes, yes they can. But okay, can you give us some insight to the types of felony? Like, what consists of a felony? <laughs> you know, um, there's felony theft. Felony theft is anything over $1,000. Oh. Okay, and there are different levels of that theft, which is classifications like uh, C felony, B felony, you know that kind of thing. Oh wow! Um, so it depends on the amount they've stolen. Um, uh, there could be 
battery second degree is a felony. As if you uh, physically assault and injure um, someone, any any person, if there's an age gap, you know, uh, say a 17 year old assaults a, uh, or hits a 12 um, year old and, and causes bodily injury, that could be classified as a felony. Oh, wow. uh, juvenile assaults or, or physically assaults a police officer, you know, yeah. that's a felony. <laughs> Healthcare worker, uh, school teacher, those are felonies. Uh, I mean, there's a wide array, okay. you know, rapes, sexual assaults, those kind of things. I mean, they're all all felony offenses. Okay. Um, because of an agency that, and when I worked, uh, sorry, when I used to work at an agency that uh, provided case management for young parents, we had to learn what the laws were on sedatory rape and other th- things of that nature. How much has the law changed when it when it comes to the age gap of consent? Or what is the age you know, gap? Consent between you know two thirteen year olds is consent. Okay. You know that's just like consenting adults. Okay. Um, but, but you know, for instance, you know, uh, fourteen year old and a nineteen year old, that's that's bad juju. Okay. So. <laughs> Look, so don't get involved if so. Uh, absolutely. Okay. And 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 you know it, it's it's hard when you and and speaking as an adult male who used to be a juvenile male, uh, it, it's hard when you're in the heat of the moment to go, hey, wait a minute, how old are you? Okay. You know, but those are things you should find out before you even get close to that moment. And it sounds like these are conversations that parents also need to have with their children. Um, you know, growing up, I used to hear, you know, why. I used to hear don't do certain things, but there was never the why behind it when it came to drugs, you know, sex or alcohol or any of those other things that teenagers can get in trouble with. It was just don't do it versus this is why I don't want you to do it. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I fell into a parenting trap myself, you know, with, with, with my kids. I have uh, three girls and, you know, it's, it's always my girls are extremely intelligent. Um, all of them honor students and you fall into the trap of you know they have their day at school you have yours at work you come home how was school you know and it's like everything's okay you know but you don't dig deeper okay you know you don't find out you know you know if they've got some issues going on with a peer if they've got some issues going on with a teacher or you know if they're being harassed by somebody or you know those things or if they've been in somebody tried to entice them with drugs you know you have to dig deeper I think those conversations that you know families used to have back in the day at the dinner table don't happen anymore because kids are eating in the room and you're eating in your room and yes. you know so that 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 whole dynamic of, of family has kind of changed with with the way we are today and everybody's you know if you go to a restaurant you, you see a family together everybody's got their phone out yeah so we need to bring back the family dinner table discussions absolutely <laughs> at home not out in public all right so moving on um when a juvenile is arrested or you know, taken into custody what is the process they go through you know we see unfortunately i know what the adults go through you go to the sheriff's office the county jail and yeah. it's you know you, you get your photograph taken fingerprint and the whole process so what is the process for juveniles uh juveniles in our district and, and it's going to be different in every district okay um and i don't mean that as like avoiding the law okay not, not, not you know using the law the way it's supposed to be used but juvenile in our district they, they there's an intake process they come in and you know there's a question and process that the intake officer will talk to them about i mean the intake officer at the detention center okay uh, and once they got all those questions and answers filled out you know they do take their picture uh, and it's just for their records when it's okay. juvenile. It's not something that's circulated. It's not something that you could get on a website and see who's in the juvenile jail like you can with the uh, RPS app that okay. you know, the, the, the city or the, or the county has. You know, uh, so that that does happen. As far as fingerprinting, uh, fingerprinting doesn't happen unless, and this is our district, unless a kid is going to be charged as an adult. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Explain that a little. What? It can cause a child. Well, it can cause a child. And it, a lot of that would be uh, what the offense is. Okay. Uh, it could be what um, the, the history that the child has. Okay. You know, if they have an extensive juvenile history. Uh, if you have an extensive juvenile history and you committed, 
you know, felony after felony after felony. Uh, there may come a point where the prosecuting attorney will go, okay, we're going to charge this juvenile as an adult now because instead of, you know, felony thefts, now he's got an aggravated robbery where he's committed to, to going into somebody's home or, or sticking up somebody with a gun or, or a knife or whatever and, and stealing from them that way. Oh, you know, wow. that it takes it up to another level. Oh, wow. Even say if they're 15 or 16? Yes, you can be charged as an adult. But, okay. but those are few and far between. Okay. Now, there's also another thing that the statute that the state formulated after the West Side shootings, because the state had no mechanism to to charge kids as adults or that, or even a, a step before that. Okay. And it's called extended juvenile jurisdiction. Extended. Okay. And what that is is if you have, you know, a 14-year-old that shoots up a school, you know, what you can do is have them in juvenile court but with extended juvenile jurisdiction um, they could be placed at the division of youth services till they're 21 and then come back and there's another level of sentencing that they would have to go through oh wow okay they may have to go to uh, adult prison for a while or they may be on adult supervised probation for an extended period of time so that, those are things that could happen um in cases where juveniles are charged either as an adult or charged with those felonies, has, can a juvenile be charged with a life sentence before they're 18? Or have you ever heard of No, a not in juvenile court. Okay. Not in juvenile court. No, the, the maximum sentences we can do in juvenile court, um, we can give you 24 months probation. Okay. We can give you up to 90 days in jail. Uh, 160 hours of public service work, $500 fine, uh, or you could be sentenced to the Division of Youth Services up to your 21st birthday. Oh, wow. And where are the, are there any facilities in Jonesboro? There are no, uh, no. facilities in Jonesboro. There's a facility, the closest one is in Harrisburg. Harrisburg. Okay. Yeah, and then the next closest one to that, I think, is in Colt. Okay. All right. Um, now, what is the role, once a juvenile gets arrested, what is the role of the caregiver or their parent? Are they allowed to be there for every step of the pro- every step of just say from booking to? No. Once a juvenile is in custody at the at the sheriff's department, they are, I guess, in custody. Okay. I mean, they're, they're they're the sheriff's department's responsibility. Okay. Thing. And uh, they they do have visitation. Okay. Uh, parents can come out either Saturday or Sunday. I think the visitation is maybe 20, 30 minutes. It's just okay. like it is with the adults. Uh, it's not both days. You can come one day or the other. Okay. Um, the different One of the differences between juveniles and adults is that, you know, you hear the money about the the, the saying about, you know, I need some money put on my books. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't put no money on nobody's books in juvenile jail. What? <laughs> no. So they don't get commissary? No, they don't get commissary. I know this hurts some of their little hearts. They can't have their snacks and whatever they're used to really, in the free world. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so maybe if some of them knew really what went down or the the real deal, yeah. they and, might change their and, mind. And about and I'm, I'm going to paint you a picture. Of the, I mean, a lot of folks don't realize when I say juvenile jail, it's jail. Okay. Um, they have a cell just like adults do. Um, if you and I'm going to say it's probably ten by ten, maybe uh, you have. Uh, if you're facing the, the, the cell door, which is, you know, an iron door that closes and locks, mm-hmm. you know, there's bunk beds against the wall, two bunk beds against the wall. There's usually a desk to one side, and in the corner is your bathroom sink and, not bathroom, but your toilet sink and water faucet. Wow. In one, one unit. Okay, so there's zero privacy. No privacy. No privacy. Okay, so... I die. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that... You know, we see, we've see we seen the Scared Straight programs. And uh, to my knowledge, nothing to the, of that nature has ever been done in Jonesboro. No, uh, it has not. Actually, um, my father's last wife... My father's passed away, but his last wife, her oldest daughter, actually worked at Scared Straight program that was on TV okay. in, in Illinois. Um all studies show that those those programs are not Effect. effective at all. Okay, so it incites fear for the moment, but Absolutely. it doesn't have a long-term effect on 
the child's behavior or their potential to become an offender, a criminal, and yes. end up back yeah, in Absolutely. The... You know, uh, I, my personal opinion, it's kind of more effective if you have a kid who's been in trouble and he does commit uh some felony offenses, but doesn't have an extensive record. Okay. Never been, never been to jail. You know, a couple of days is all they need. <laughs> okay, that's enough. And they know they don't want to go back. Okay. Um, now, do you feel though that if a parent has a child that is simply unruly, um, they have gone to CYS? For those who don't, you know, uh, CYS in Jonesboro, there's one in Harrisburg, is. I think Four City, uh, somewhere near Four City, consolidated youth services. Mm-hmm. From what I know, or what I knew years ago, it was a step down from the detainment center. Yes. Um. So if a parent has a child that has either gone to CYS or feels they're unruly, uncontrollable, whatever the case, do you feel maybe a tour of the jail system? Like, is that even allowed? That is allowed. Okay. And you can get those things set up through the. Uh, the juvenile jail administrator his name's david chadwick okay so yeah we've, we've done those things before we don't do them that much but they are willing to do those things from your experience observation has a child maybe ch- had a change of behavior after going through a tour or having a discussion with an officer it, it works for some uh, i couldn't give you a percentage of, okay. of how effective it is but you know we're willing to try anything as they say throw it against the wall and see if it sticks and, you know <laughs> Okay. And, and, and what works for some don't work for others. Okay. All right. Um, and then what happened? I think we, we talked about this a little bit. Um, but what happens in the cases where they're in, the family's in court, the judge gives an order, and the parent caregiver is simply just not following rules? They just refuse to be cooperative. What can the judge do? Or what will the judge, from your observation? <laughs> um give you a case yesterday I can't give any names of course but um, we have for certain cases we have a an assessment that is done it's called the safer assessment and it's basically to determine at what risk the kid is to reoffend okay and that would be low medium or high um, it's a bunch of information gathering that we get we have to talk to the juvenile by himself we talk to the parent we talk to both of them you know we follow up with the school and maybe you know other family members just gather as much information we can okay uh, we even talk to if they've had some mental health counseling the counselors and that kind of thing and it helps us determine what services we can offer the kid uh, what range of punishments we think the kid may need okay. uh, how long they should be on probation so those are you know that's one of the tools that we use to kind of figure that that, that thing out okay. now we had a parent come in to court yesterday who was scheduled twice to come in and do the do the assessment and, and did come one time, came the last time, and just refused. You're not going to talk to my child by, by himself. Okay, fine. So, uh, you know, the only recourse we have, because we don't know what service to offer, I just max out everything. Wow. And, you know, that's not fair to the kid because his mother, you know, didn't do what she was supposed to do. And in court yesterday, I mean, the judge, the judge was pretty tough on him. But she just, and she gave her an opportunity to make it up and just said, you know, I'm ordering you now to get this done. Now, if she doesn't do it and refuses, what we will do as, a, as an office is file a contempt on her. And she would go to court and be in front of the judge and have to uh, prove to the judge why she shouldn't be held in contempt of court. So now the parent faces charges, could possibly face charges of their own in possible jail time. Absolutely. Why even go through that if that can be avoided? Just do what the judge says. Okay. You know, we, we, we file contempt charges all the time. I mean, um, you know, for there are fees and costs with what we do. People don't pay. Okay. You pay your bills, folks. <laughs> pay your bills. We like the light company. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll shut you off. Because <laughs> uh, you don't pay, they will come get you. Now, can you arrest? I know I asked you about arresting a child at school. Can you arrest them anywhere? Like, you got word they're person of interest or they you know you roll up on them and can you arrest them if, anywhere if, if i roll up on a child who i if if i see a child who's committing an, an offense at that moment i can arrest them okay if we have a child who is on probation that we are looking for for a violation we can arrest them okay i can't arrest just little johnny walking down the street for no reason well, I, you know, say I you you know 
Okay. Well, even if, just say they are a suspect in a case. Um, they didn't get arrested, but you got word by way of investigation and witness, whatever the case. You see them or you know some of their whereabouts. You can arrest them at that time. Uh... But it's still kind of... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of sketchy. That's something we don't usually do. That's okay. more of a, a thing that the police department does. Okay. Okay. You know, and, and if they have um, what would be called a bolo, be on the lookout okay. for, for this person, uh, then they would probably have some instructions with that bolo as to we want them detained and brought to the police department. We want them detained and taken to the detention center so we can question them. Okay. Even though even though they want them detained and if they get them and they're picked up, they still have to notify the parent. Okay. Um, and say you see someone out, just probation violation, and their parent tries to intervene, you know, don't take them in. You know, they intervene in the wrong way. Can the parent also be arrested at that moment as well? If they're interfering with okay. the uh, arrest, absolutely. Wow. That's happened before. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, so on the flip side... We don't want our children to get in trouble. So what can we, as parents and caregivers, do? I know it's impossible, you know, to have perfect angelic children all the time, but what can we realistically do? Parents, caregivers, community? Um, it has to start young. Okay. Uh, you have to, as a parent, be a disciplinary and young. You know, while they're young. Okay. You can't make light of some of the things that they do that is, you know, unsavory. Okay. Uh, it's not funny, you know, when they're 16 years old when they're doing it. It shouldn't be funny when they're, you know, two years old doing it. Okay. That doesn't mean you have to uh, spank the two-year-old, but, you know, you should know your two-year-old as well. Yes. You may need one. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, you know, we talked a little bit about correction of behavior but with explanation so um do you find that most kids kids juveniles to come through the system after having a talk with their parent and uh, maybe counseling services do you feel you get a an overview of why they committed that we try okay. it, it's hard sometimes kids are just not gonna be truthful okay you know they, they a lot of times they won't be truthful in front of the judge so, I mean, it's just, you know, when we got the facts of the case in front of us and, you know, they get up and say, well, you know, Eddie Murphy defense wasn't me. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, it just, it, it happens. Okay. All right. So, we're going to get ready to take another quick break. When we come back, we're just going to wrap up and any allow you to give any final words, anything we didn't discuss, you feel that the community needs to know. And also, we're going to talk about an app that's available for parents to help control some of their children do on um, these different devices they have control of get <laughs> access to. Uh, you tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 of them. We'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. People who manage money well know three things at all times. Not in their heads, but on paper or on a computer. What their expenses are for the year, for each month, and often by the day. They have a plan for their spending, so they know their household costs and obligations like the back of their hands. They know where their money goes. They never look up at the end of the month, surprised that they're out of money or wondering where it all went. They understand to the penny how their money is spent and what they spent it on. They also know where they want their money to go. They have specific goals for spending, saving, and investing their money and have allocated funds in their budget to achieve their goals according to a real schedule. Here's the reality. If you're not serious about budgeting, you're not serious about your finances, period. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. 
Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. KLEK thanks CJ Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1st, 1977. Originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. Hello, I'm Officer Victoria Evans. I have always had a desire to help others in need and to be an example and role model to young women by encouraging them to never give up on their dreams. My dream was to become a police officer and to serve my community. In 2016, that dream became a reality and it is the most rewarding experience of my life. Now I want to let you know about the same opportunity. The Jonesboro Police Department will conduct testing every month for patrol officers. Applications are available online at jonesboropolice.com or at the Police Department, 1001 South Caraway Work. The Jonesboro Police Department offers a competitive salary, health and retirement benefits, top of the line training, and most importantly, the chance to make a difference in the Jonesboro community. Join me in making Jonesboro a better place. The Jonesboro Police Department is an equal opportunity employer, and women and minorities are especially encouraged to apply. More information is available at 870-935-5657. Meineke of Jonesboro is now Starks Auto Service, a full-service auto repair and vehicle maintenance center offering engine and transmission repair, brake service, tires, oil changes, and more performed by ASE certified mechanics. Starks Auto Service, 2813 South Caraway Road in Jonesboro, 870-204-7112. Starks Auto Service, jonesboro.com. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I've been your host, Kabila Jones, and my special guest today is Mr. Lewis Davis Jr., who is the Juvenile Direct District Supervisor from the Second, second Judicial District of oh, Cricket okay. oh, County. I'm going to get it right before the day is over. All right. So this last segment, I'm going to let Mr. Lewis have it. He's going to share information we didn't cover and share information about an app that's available for parents to control some of the behavior on these devices these children have. <laughs> Uh, since our time is limited, I'll just kind of give you a brief overview. Okay. One of the things I want to discuss or, or tell, you, tell the listeners about is our FINS program. Okay. FINS is an acronym for Family in Need of Services. Uh, it's something that we have in our office that would allow parents to 
come to our office and, and request help for their children who, you know, may be disobedient, have drug problems, um, you know, not attending school, uh, just an array of things. And, and we have somebody in the office they come and talk to and we can offer certain services, whether it be supervision, direct them in the right place for counseling, if they need some inpatient treatment, those kind of things. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. So, and please tell us where the office is located. The office is located at the Courthouse Annex Building. Okay. The address is 511 Union Avenue. Uh, we are on the third floor. Okay. Third. My office is Suite 310. Okay. So if you have any trouble with your juvenile uh, under 18, please go see Mr. Lewis, and I'm sure they'll be happy to help you with any issues. And, and, and with Finn's issues, they can be under 10 years old. So. Under, under 10? <laughs> yes, and we get those a lot with Finn's. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about was we have a juvenile drug court, um, okay. and one of the things we do for some of our offenders, if we figure out that what they've got going on is drug related, we will refer them to drug court. Okay. And if they work our drug court program, that will allow them most of the time to have their charges um, null prost or dismissed. Okay. So, um, been pretty effective. Uh, it's not very big or expansive. I think we may have 10 or 12 kids in it right now, which is enough because we only have one worker uh, doing the program. But, you know, we monitor the kids. Um, with extensive drug testing and you know okay. the parents have been really involved in that program okay. so that that helps out a lot so uh, that program has been really effective as well with, with some of the children that go through the ju the drug court programs do you have you heard them talk about why okay first of all have you seen a turnaround and then have you heard them talk about the root issue of why they got involved in drugs in the first place you know we, we've had good success with it and okay. we've had some relapses i mean that happens no program is going to be perfect uh but it, it has shown good success um with the why you know most of it is is an introduction you know from a friend you know or a family member you know they, they get them started so that, that's usually the case there all right um and the last thing I want to tell the, the listeners about is the app that I actually got access to or okay. was given information to yesterday. Uh, it's called Our Pact. That's uh, O-U-R-P-A-C-T. Okay. It is on iOS. Okay. I know for uh, Apple and it should be on the uh, Android. For, for Android as well. But it is a parental software that allows you to install the app on your child's phone and give you complete control over all of their apps. Shutting nice. them down, giving them access when you choose them to have it. And it's also coded to where they can't delete the app. Oh wow. So you can put a code in and they won't be able to delete the app. So this would be very helpful, especially when they're in school and they should be focused on the schoolwork versus texting, Skyping, or Snapchat. Snapchatting now, not Skype. I don't think anyone even uses Skype That's anymore. right, you gotta catch up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When, when we think we know, we're already 10 steps behind the kids okay. on, that, on that kind of information, so. And then there are so many other um, text messaging apps where they don't have to use their phone number, and right. all that can be dangerous still, because they can be talking to anyone from any country, just anywhere, and it could be a child predator. Absolutely, and it happens all the time. Wow. So parents be more mindful of what your children are doing out there on in the cyber world, um, in the real world <laughs> as well. Any final thoughts or, you know, advice we'd like to give? Uh, you know, parents just need to be vigilant uh, as to what their children are doing. Uh, that makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, first and foremost, don't believe everything your child says. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Do not like wait. I told my child once before, my my son once before, uh, I I was your age before, and I've already done it. What you even thinking about trying to do? They so, think we don't know. <laughs> they think we have been no there, done that. Got the shirt. <laughs> okay, I try to tell mine that the game is still the same. The players have changed, and that's technology it. has changed. That's it. That's all. <laughs> but that's it. All right. We want to thank everyone for tuning in, um, for listening. Um, thank you, Mr. Lewis, definitely for coming by and. He will not be a one-time guest only. We'll have him back again to share more information. Um, but I hope everyone has a great day. And remember to stay hydrated. It's hot outside. <laughs>